James, still in a trance, walked behind Morgan through the halls of the Ainslands Castle. Beautiful pictures, which dated back to 1800 to 1909, hung along the walls. Too bad for James that he couldn't see them. Two halls down and one hall to the right, two old demons were talking to each other. When James and Morgan passed the two old demons, they stopped talking and looked at James like, where in the world did he come from? They watched James and Morgan walk towards the throne room. When Morgan and James walked into the throne room, Dimitri was sitting on his throne. Dimitri watched them come towards him, then stood up from his throne and walked down to them. He looked at Morgan. Why did you bring this human into our world? Morgan replied, I brought him to our world because he's the key. Dimitri answered, Are you sure? Morgan took off James's BDU shirt, and there on his chest was a small scar next to his heart. Dimitri looked at it. Is that scar all you have to prove what he is? Morgan replied, It's the only proof I have, until the fourteenth hour. Dimitri said, I have a better plan to prove what he is. Morgan knew what he meant. I told you to leave her alone, Dimitri. Dimitri laughed. You can't tell me what to do, Morgan. Remember, I have you under my control, and I can make you do anything I want you to do. And I want your slave to drink your friend Felicia's blood. Morgan replied, I won't do it. Dimitri's eyes turned red, and Morgan fell to her knees. She screamed. <laughs> Get out of my mind! Morgan fell to her hands, and Dimitri had her where he wanted her. His eyes turned white. Now, Morgan, take your slave and kill Felicia. Morgan got to her feet. Yes, master. She turned to James, picked up his BDU shirt, and threw it to him. Let's go. Slave. James put his shirt back on. Yes, my mistress. Morgan led James to a room where a blacksmith demon waited. She walked up to him. I need to brand my slave with a special mark. The demon blacksmith turned to her. Will this do, Mistress Morgan? The demon showed her a brand mark that looked like a person chained to a wall. Morgan lifted James's right sleeve over his right shoulder. Don't move. James stood there, and Morgan branded him with a slave mark. Morgan gave it back to the blacksmith. Then she turned back to James. The brand will stay with you forever. No matter where you are, I will have control over you. James replied, Yes, my mistress. Morrigan took James out of the room and started to head towards the gates to Human World. When they got to the gate, Morrigan heard the twelfth-hour chime go off. Morrigan opened the gate to the Human World and walked through it, and James followed her. When James and Morrigan appeared in the Human World, it was ten o'clock p.m. Meanwhile, at Felicity's house of orphans, Felicia and John were talking to each other in a garden behind the orphanage. Felicia and John hadn't talked in 18 years. Felicia was now known as Sister Felicity, and John was known as Master Talbrain in his dojo in America. Felicia sat down and fixed her habit. So, are you happy with what you do, John? John sat on a bench across from her. I am, but sometimes my students can't tell the difference between their lefts and their rights. Felicia laughed. And <laughs> they'll learn. John sighed. Ah, <sighs> Felicia, are you happy with what you do? Felicia didn't look at him. I like helping people. John replied. That doesn't answer my question. Felicia stood up and turned her back to him. I'm not really happy. 
She turned back to him. I always think about what we could have. John replied. I keep on telling you that I don't love you the way you love me, Felicia. I just like you. Felicia answered. Isn't that enough to build a relationship? John stood up. It's not enough for me, Felicia. It's already too late to start a relationship because you're a nun. And I know that Father Joseph will kick you out if we start to date. He started to walk away from her. From the shadows, Morgan clapped her hands. What a way to shoot her down. John looked at her. What do you want? Morgan pointed at Felicia. Her blood. Felicia was surprised to hear Morgan. I thought we were friends, Morgan. Morgan replied. I changed my mind. John turned into his werewolf form. If you want her, you're going to have to come through me. Morrigan laughed. <laughs> I'm not the one you have to deal with. John gave her a confused look. He saw James slowly walking toward Morrigan, who stepped aside and let James stand next to her. Morgan looked up at the night sky and saw that the moon was hiding behind a black cloud. She looked back at John. You have until a cloud moves away from the moon. For when the moonlight hits my slave, he will turn into his incubus form. John got into his fighting stance. I'll make sure he's dead before the moonlight hits him. Morrigan laughed, and James charged at John. James threw a punch, but John caught his fist and tossed James over his right shoulder. James got back to his feet and got into his fighting stance, which was a cross between street fighting and martial arts. John jumped into the air and did his wolf missile kick towards James. Meanwhile, in the demon world, Dimitri was watching the fight between John and James. He watched James catch John's wolf missile kick and throw him into a wall. Dimitri heard the 13th hour chime go off. He waited for the 14th hour to chime to see if James was really the key that would bring the human world to an end. When the 13-hour chime stopped, he started to watch the fight again. Dimitri noticed that James had the upper hand. He also noticed the incubus in James's body wanted to get out. Back at the orphanage, James had John where he wanted him. Just then, the moonlight broke through the black cloud and hit James. James fell to his knees and screamed in pain, as he started to change into a red and black demon. When James was fully in his incubus form, he was 6'1", built like a giant bodybuilder, and his horns were like a ram's horns. John looked at James and started to charge his wolf beam, which was made up of his dark powers. James looked at Felicia, who stood to his left side. He smelled fear from Felicia, which turned him on. James turned to her, and Felicia started to back away from him. John saw this, and fired his wolf beam at James. When the beam hit James, he fell to the ground. This made James very angry, so he got back to his feet and grabbed John by his neck, for John stood in his arm's reach. James picked him off his feet and threw him into another wall. When John hit the wall, he knocked a hole in it. The wall collapsed on him, making him turn back into his human form. Felicia ran to him and checked to see if he was okay. When she got to him, she saw that he was bleeding. James slowly walked toward Felicia, who turned towards him. Grabbing the bottom of her habit and throwing it off, she got into her fighting stance, which turned James on even more. He stopped about five feet from her. Felicia deployed her claws and charged at James. She jumped into the air, and when she landed on James, she dug her claws in him and started to claw him. But James slapped Felicia off of him. Felicia landed on her feet and did sandbox attack, which blinded James for two seconds, long enough for Felicia to curl into a ball and attack him with her curl attack. James stumbled backwards and almost fell to the ground, but he shook off the effect of Felicia's attack. He thrusted his hand towards Felicia and did a psychic blast. When the psychic blast hit Felicia, she flew backwards and hit the ground hard and was knocked out. Morrigan walked towards James and stopped two inches from him. 
change back into your human form, so you won't stay just a normal incubus. James replied, Yes, my mistress. James turned back into his human form and started to walk towards Felicia. When he stood over her, Morgan looked at Felicia. Feed on her, my slave. James answered, Yes, my mistress. James knelt down next to Felicia's left side and gently picked up her head. His fangs went slowly towards her next main vein. When his fangs touched her neck, he froze. Morgan looked at James. Drink her blood. James pushed his fangs slowly into her neck and froze again. Morgan yelled. Kill her already! James didn't listen, for his human side held his incubus side at bay. James's soul wasn't fighting the incubus side by itself, for it had the help of his guardian angel and his savior with the help of his mother's prayer. Back in the demon world, Dimitri was trying to figure out what was keeping James from killing Felicia. He sensed a good strong heart in James and three spirits. When he tried to scan the three spirits, one of the spirits, which was stronger than him, made him fly into a wall. The power from the one spirit was so powerful that it started to break the mind control from Dimitri to Morgan, and the mind control from Morgan to James. Just then, the fourteenth hour chimed, and it was time to see if James was the true key for which Dimitri had been waiting for over one hundred years. Just then, a crystal ball on a bat-shaped stand broke into small pieces and flew all over the throne room. Meanwhile, behind the orphanage, when the power of the one spirit broke the mind control, Morrigan blacked out and fell to the ground. James's fangs were barely in Felicia's main neck vein, and that's where they would stay until the fight over James's body was over. Just then, James's heart felt the fourteenth hour chime and started to give the one strong spirit the upper hand. A key started to form on the ground next to James's left side. Just then, James pulled his fangs slowly away from Felicia. James fell back on his hand, and the incubus started to leave his body from his mouth. The incubus flew out of James's mouth and leaned two feet next to Felicia. James fell on his back and blacked out. The incubus picked itself up and turned to where James and Felicia were laying. The incubus walked towards Felicia. James started to wake up. The incubus stood at Felicia's feet and grabbed her legs and spread them open. James opened his eyes and looked up and saw the incubus. The incubus knelt in between Felicia's legs. James quickly did a handstand and used his strength to do a Chinese samurai jump. When James landed on his feet, he got into his fighting stance. The incubus looked up and saw James in his fighting stance. The incubus stood up and got into his fighting stance, which looked like James's stance. James looked on the ground next to Felicia and saw a key. James did a cartwheel and picked up the key and pushed it in his boxers, for that was all he had on after changing into his incubus form by force. When James walked into the moonlight, he heard a voice. Because you're proud of the dark power, you'll be a dark stalker vampire until you save the one you love. James looked around, trying to see where the voice was coming from but he didn't see anybody. James fell to his knees and started to turn into a vampire. A protonic field appeared around James, who now looked like a buffered up Dracula. His eyes were completely white. He looked like Dimitri, but he was wearing a blue and gray top, brown boots, and blue pants. The incubus wasn't impressed by how strong he looked. The incubus charged up a beam in his hands and fired it at James. James blocked the incubus's attack and jumped into the air, throwing his left foot in front of him and starting to descend towards the incubus. The incubus caught his foot and threw him into a tree. James pulled himself from the tree and got into a swordsman's stance. While James was still in this stance, waiting for the incubus to attack, he let something gather energy on his right hand. When James looked at his hand, a white energy ball was building up. When the incubus started to charge at him, James fired the energy ball by throwing his hand in front of his body. The white energy ball flew at the incubus. 
The Incubus tried to block it, but the energy ball was too strong and knocked him into a wall ten feet away. What James didn't know was he used a psychic blast on the Incubus. James got back into his swordsman stance, and the white energy ball started to build up again. The Incubus got back to his feet and saw James charging up his attack. But this time, the Incubus started to charge up his psychic blast so he could counter. James fired his psychic blast attack at the Incubus. The Incubus fired his psychic blast attack at James's psychic blast and held his hands behind the blast to give it more power. The Incubus' psychic blast broke through James's psychic blast and started to head towards James. James covered his eyes with his left arm and tried to block the blast with his right hand. But James didn't know that protonic energy started to build up in his palm. When the blast hit James's right hand, the protonic energy started to push it back towards the Incubus. James uncovered his eyes and noticed that the beam was about 12 inches from his right hand. The protonic energy started to become stronger than the psychic blast. When James moved his right hand up, the protonic energy fired from his palm and James held his right hand in front of him. What he didn't know was if he kept his hand up in front of his body, the stronger the attack would become before it hit its target. The protonic energy broke through the psychic blast and struck the incubus, making him black out. A voice in the wind said, You must use Twist of Fate to destroy the incubus. To use this attack, you must put both of your hands in front of your body and yell Twist of Fate. This will make a beam appear out of your hands and hit your target. James put his hands together, then opened them, holding them close to each other. Twist of Fate! When the beam fired from his hands, he flew backwards and hit the ground. The beam flew at the incubus. When the beam hit the incubus, there was a loud explosion. When James got to his feet, he noticed that the incubus was gone without a trace. James cleared his mind and looked at the fallen Felicia. James walked towards her. He grabbed her legs and closed them. After James put her legs down, he slowly walked around her feet and stopped on her left side. He knelt down and looked at her. She's beautiful. James gently picked up her head. He brushed some of her blue hair through his fingers. Such beauty. And yet, I feel an emptiness in her heart, like she's missing something from her life. He felt Felicia move slightly in his arms. James felt his heart thump in his chest. Then he noticed there was a habit lying on the ground. She's a nun? James looked down at Felicia's face and let love at first sight come over him. He slowly moved his lips towards hers. God forgive me. James kissed her on her mouth and held it there before backing off. He heard footsteps coming towards him, and he gently put down Felicia on the ground. He could hear two female voices coming closer to him. James ran towards the wall and jumped over it. To his amazement, he cleared the whole wall with one jump. When he landed, he ran for his life. He didn't know where he was going, but he did know that he needed a place to stay. James kept on running down the empty streets. Back at the orphanage, two nuns found Felicia lying on the ground without her habit and found John bleeding in a collapsed wall. The two nuns ran back to the orphanage to get Father Joseph. Father Joseph walked into the garden where the two nuns said that they saw Sister Felicity and her friend in a collapsed wall, bleeding heavily. He couldn't believe that he saw what the two nuns described to him. Father Joseph ran to Felicia and shook her. What's the meaning of this? Felicia opened her eyes and saw Father Joseph looking at her angrily. Felicia noticed that she wasn't wearing her habit and started to cry, not answering Father Joseph. Father Joseph let go of her and walked towards the collapsed wall. When he reached the wall, he noticed that John and his blood were gone. Father Joseph turned to Felicia. I'm sorry for what I have to do, my daughter. Felicia looked at Father Joseph. Please don't say what I think you're going to say. Father Joseph turned his back to her. You must leave this orphanage and never come back. Felicia replied. 
No, please. These children are all I have to make me happy. Father Joseph answered, You should have thought of that before you invited your friend. You have until morning to pack your things or I'm calling the police to arrest you. Father Joseph walked out of the garden. Felicia was crying so hard that she couldn't pick herself up. Hiding on top of a nearby roof, Morgan watched as Felicia was taken inside. 